Okay, I put in the boot disk that we just burned and I've started up the computer and you can see that I'm instantly met with the Welcome to Indian Firewall. You can see that it recognizes it as a Linux operating system and it's prompting me to hit the enter key to start the boot process. Okay, now all I have to do is choose my language. I'm going to use the keys on the keyboard and I will arrow down to English and then tab over to OK and hit enter and it says welcome to the EFW installation program if I select cancel on any of the items it'll reboot the computer okay so I'll just hit enter okay please enter your activation key so this is where I will put in the activation key that I received from Indian alright and then I'll tab over to OK and hit enter all right, now, warning, all data on the current system will be lost. Are you sure you want to continue the installation? I'll arrow down to yes, and then tab over to OK and hit enter. And you can see that right away, the Indian software sees and auto-detects the two hard drives that I have installed in this computer. And it prompts me with a question, would I like to enable software RAID 1 mirroring support? Well, yes, and let me tell you why you want to have redundancy on your system and if I choose to have Endian set up a RAID 1 mirroring situation then anything written to the first drive will be mirrored and then written and copied essentially to the second drive so I'll hit tab and enter for OK OK on the next screen it asks me if I want to enable a console over the serial port if your computer hardware has a serial port or COM port then you can set up a console situation where you can console into your Indian firewall router. Now to do this you're going to need a console cable or a rollover cable and you'll need probably a serial port on the laptop or other device that you're going to use as your client that you're going to console in from. So I'll arrow down to yes and then tab over to OK and hit enter. OK it looks like it loaded all of the packages that we need and now we need to choose the IP address for our green interface. The green interface is going to be for our local area network, so this will be the LAN side of the network, and the IP address that we give to the Indian software appliance will be the IP address that we use to contact it, the management interface. So I'm going to accept the default, which is 192.168.0.15 with a 24-bit subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. So I'll accept that. I'm going to tab over to OK and hit Enter. Okay, congratulations, EFW was successfully installed. Please remove any floppy disks or CD-ROMs from the computer. All right, we'll hit enter. Okay, so you can see that the Endian software appliance has finished installing and now it's restarting. All right, we're observing the boot process here. You can see the jobs loading at the top progress bar. And now this is the screen that you'll be met with once the installation is finished and the appliance has finished restarting. You can see the progress bar is still going at the top showing us the boot process and all the jobs that are loading. If a job loads successfully with no errors it gets a green number on the right hand side. If a job starts and there are some errors it gets a red number. And you can see we have a 1 there and that's because we do not have internet connectivity set up yet. By default when the Indian firewall appliance starts up, the DHCP server is down and the network interfaces are not set up yet. So we're going to need to do that if we want to set up and get internet connectivity. Okay, as that's finishing booting up, we can talk about what else we can see here at this screen. You can see that it tells us the version number of the Indian firewall appliance. It tells us the product, that it's the software appliance. Most importantly, it tells us the management URL. This is the IP address that we're going to use to connect to the device from a web browser from another computer. So you can see that it's https colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.15 colon 10443 or 10443. All right, and at this, at this command prompt that we have here, or console, we're given some choices that we can put in really easily. We can put in a 0 and get to a shell. We can put in a 1 on the keyboard and hit enter and we'll reboot the machine. 
we can change the root password or the admin password. The root password is used to get secure shell access to the machine. So if you wanted to, let's say, use PuTTY or something like that to secure shell into the firewall device, you could do it that way. The admin password is used for the web management interface. And if we've forgotten both our root passwords and our admin password, we could put a 4 in here and hit enter and restore the system to its factory defaults. Okay, let's put in 0 and get to a shell. And you can see now I'm at the shell. I can type login and it asks me for the root password. Now, we're going to set up a root and admin password from the browser-based interface the first time we connect this device from another machine and configure the device. But if you haven't done that yet, your root password by default will be the word Endian. So I'll just type in Endian and hit enter. And you can see I've got a root console. Now from this root console, I can type help, get a list of the commands that are available to me, and their aliases at the bottom. So I could put in, let's say, a dir command, and or a list long command to see the file permissions. I'll put in a cd and go to the root folder, space, forward slash, and now I'm in the root of the directory structure. And I can type in ll and see all of the directories and permissions. And you can see that for all of these directories, it looks like a standard Linux file system. Let's cat to the root proc directory and put md stat. OK, and as you can see, here's our RAID 1 mirror. And you can see it says here, MD2 active RAID 1. And you can see that the RAID is building. The RAID array is building. You can see recovery equals 8.7%. And I'm going to reissue the command. And you can see now it's at 21%. I'll just up arrow, reissue the command. You can see it's building. OK, so if you're on your first boot, if your Endian software appliance is taking some time booting on first boot, it's probably because the RAID 1 mirror, it takes a while to build itself, as you can see as I issue these commands. Quit out, let that RAID array build itself, and we're left here at the front screen for the Endian firewall appliance. All right, Endian is installed and ready to be configured. All we need to do is connect to the LAN port through a web browser on another computer on the 192.168.0 network.